In this video, we are going to look at Microsoft PowerPoint. First, let's talk about what PowerPoint is used for. PowerPoint is used to create an electronic slideshow for use in usually a professional setting. A PowerPoint presentation can be edited or delivered in a variety of different ways. You can project the slideshow on a screen as part of a presentation. You can run it automatically at a kiosk or from a DVD. You can even display it on the internet. You can email it or create handouts with it. Some terms that you need to be familiar with before we move on is a slide. So a slide is the most basic element of uh, PowerPoint. Uh, a slide is similar to a page being the most basic element of the Microsoft Word. So a collection of slides is referred to a deck of slides. So the slides can be easily arranged just as cards can be easily shuffled in a deck of cards. So you can remember it that way. The uh, arranged slides displayed on screen for an audience is a slideshow. Uh, it's often referred to as a presentation. So when you open a new presentation or you know, a presentation that you have previously created, you will see the default PowerPoint workspace, which is the normal view. Okay, so that's what the normal view looks like, where you have the slides pane on the left-hand side here. You have the slide pane on the right-hand side here, which takes up most of your view. And you have the splitter bar here that splits it. And then you have a thumbnail of each slide in your slides pane. So you also have the status bar, which is at the bottom of your screen here. In the status bar, you have your uh, slide number, you have a spell check icon, you have your notes button, your comments button, your views button, your zoom slider and the zoom level button. You also have fit slide to current window button here. So all that's available to you at the very bottom uh, called the status bar. So next, I'd like you to please go watch your uh, video tutorial on hiding the left pane that displays the thumbnails so that you can expand the workspace that you need as you're working on each slide. And I would also like you to watch the video tutorial on customizing the status bar. Okay, next, let's uh, take a look at using PowerPoint views efficiently. So in addition to the normal view that we just looked at, PowerPoint also offers specialty views. Um, the presentations view group on the view tab enables you to access these views, normal, outline, slide sorter, notes page, and reading view. So let's begin with the outline view. So use the outline view when you like to enter text into your presentation using an outline. So instead of ha having to enter the text onto each placeholder on each slide separately, you can type the text directly into the outline. So this is what an outline view looks like. So on the left hand side, you have the outline view and you can just enter the text right into here. So you can go from slide to slide um, very easily and very quickly. Next, we have the slide sorter view. The slide sorter view displays thumbnails of your presentation slides, which enables you to view multiple slides all at the same time. This view is very helpful if you want to change the order of slides or delete one or more slides. So you can change the transition effects. Um, transition effects are the ways um, slides transition from one to another for multiple slides in the slide sorter view. So if you're in a slide sorter view, um, you can double click on a slide thumbnail and PowerPoint will display that slide in a normal view. Okay, so here's the slide sorter view. And if you want this one, you just double click on it and then it'll open that up into a normal view. So let's watch the video tutorial now on rearranging slides in the slide sorter view. When you're done, please come back to this video. Moving on, we are going to look at the notes page view. So use the notes page view when you need to enter and edit large amounts of text um, that you can refer to when you're presenting. So slides should contain only the key points and you should elaborate on the key points verbally as you deliver the presentation. Uh, the speaker notes are a really useful tool when you're giving a presentation. They won't display when the presentation is shown except for when presenter view is used. So notes are intended to help the speakers kind of add to the key points, um, more additional information and details. 
All right, so this is what it looks like. The speaker notes are here, and this is the notes page view. Okay, so when you open that up, that's what it appears to be. Right, next we have the reading view. Okay, the reading view, you can, in the reading view, you can view the slideshow full screen, one slide at a time. Animations and the transitions are active in the reading view. So you have a title bar, including, including the minimize, maximize, restore, and close buttons that's visible, as well as the modified status bar down here. And the status bar includes navigation buttons, menu, um, many for accomplishing common tasks like printing and so on. Next, we have the slideshow view. When you present your slideshow, you use the slideshow view. The slideshow view delivers a complete presentation full screen to your audience, one slide at a time, as an electronic presentation. So the slideshow can be presented manually, where you click the mouse to move from one slide to another, like I am right now, or automatically, where each slide stays on the screen for a predetermined amount of time, and then the next slide appears when it's supposed to. So a slideshow can contain a combination of both methods. When you want to end the slideshow, you press escape. And the view also has pointer tools, slide navigator, and slide zoom. We also have the presenter view. So the presenter view is accessed from the monitors group on the slideshow tab. And it's really valuable when it, because it lets you deliver a presentation using two monitors simultaneously. So this is where you would go. Okay, in the monitors group on the slideshow tab. So over here is your monitors group. Typically, one monitor is a projector that delivers a full screen presentation to the audience, and then the other one would be a laptop that displays the presentation in the presenter view. So it would look like this. This is a presenter view, and your view, if you're presenting, would look like this with the pointer options, navigation, and speaker notes all here, but then the audience would only see this. <coughs> Excuse me. So typing a speaker note, instead of changing your view to notes page view to type your speaker notes, you can change the display on the notes pane, which is down here. So click on the notes on the status bar. So the status bar again is this, this orange one down here. And then you can't quite see it here, but you can zoom in and see there's a notes, uh, notes open, close notes pane option here. So you click on that. And then when you click on it, the notes pane will be appear below the slide pane. Okay, so right here, this is your notes pane. Okay, so your slides pane is the main working area and then your notes pane will appear. And these are all your notes that you can enter. So I would like you to now watch the video tutorial, please, on speaker notes. All right, moving on, let's talk about saving as a PowerPoint show. So when you save a PowerPoint presentation, by default, it's saved as a PPTX file extension, right? So when you open the file, it opens to a normal view or uh, edit mode so that you can make changes to the presentation. If you use save as and save the PowerPoint show as a PPSX extension, then the presentation opens in a slideshow view. So you won't see the PowerPoint interface and the presentation is in play mode. This is really useful if you're ready to present and you don't want your audience to see your PowerPoint interface. You can double click on the PowerPoint show file with the PBSX extension. And that opens up the presentation in the slideshow view. So PowerPoint presentations are often saved as PBSX files for distributing to others. Uh, a PBSX file cannot be changed while viewing. You can open the file in PowerPoint and then edit it though. Next, let's look at uh, presentation creation. To create your own presentation, you have to choose a theme, add content, and apply formatting. You can create the presentation by adding the content first and then applying formatting. So you can concentrate on your message and the structure before you get distracted about the design. And trust me, you can really spend a lot of time worrying about the design and getting you know kind of sidetracked by that. So make sure you have your content in there first. Next, uh, planning and preparing a presentation. So creating an effective presentation really requires a lot of planning um, before you even start. So first determine the purpose of your presentation. Why are you creating this uh, presentation? What is it for? 
and then find out the needs that your audience has. What are their expectations? What is their level of interest and their level of knowledge about the topic that you're already about to present? So after determining your purpose and then researching your audience, then you brainstorm how to deliver your message. So before using your computer even, you might want to sketch out your thoughts on paper and this will help you organize your thoughts. After organizing your key points and then add them to the slideshow and then format the presentation. <clears throat> so one of the really useful tools is using a storyboard. Okay, a storyboard is a visual plan for your presentation that helps you map out the direction of your presentation. It can be a very rough draft that you sketch out while brainstorming, or it can be an elaborate plan that includes the text and objects drawn as they would actually appear on the slide. So it's up to you how much um, detail you want to put in there. Okay, so let's look at a, a simple PowerPoint storyboard. A simple PowerPoint storyboard is divided into sections representing individual slides. The first block in the storyboard is, of course, used for the title slide. Then the blocks after that can be used to introduce the topics, develop the topics, and then summarize the information. Okay, so this is an example of a storyboard. <clears throat> so it goes slide by slide. The first one is a title slide, then you have the introduction slide, then you have the first key point, second, third, fourth, and then the summary, and then uh, you might want to talk about the layout in here and the visual elements that you're going to use in there. So this is just an example of one style of uh, storyboard that you can use. And then you, of course, translate that into the actual slides, and it makes it easier to populate them with content, you know, if you do it after you had all your uh, content organized and planned out. So after you have created your storyboard, you can review what you wrote. Okay, make sure that you're using short phrases. Shorten complete sentences to phrases that you can use as bulleted points. Use bullet points in PowerPoints. Okay, um, take away, you know, excess adverbs and adjectives and use only a few of them. Don't be too wordy. Make it as concise and as short and simple as possible. So think like a newspaper editor. What does that mean? Think about how you would write headlines. They're usually short and interesting and just uses as few words as possible, right? For example, good computer skills are required of each student attending this course. Could be shortened to, uh, this course requires good computer skills. So think about a shorter way to write something, all right? Um, use an active voice. Edit the phrases so they begin with an active voice. When you're using the active voice, the subject of the phrase performs the action expressed in the verb. A passive voice needs more, more words to communicate your ideas and can make your presentation seem a bit boring and flat. So an example here of an active voice, okay, what does it mean? What does an active voice mean? An example is students need good computer skills. That's active. Passive voices, good computer skills are required of students. Okay, so that's kind of passive. Also use parallel construction so that your bullets are in the same grammatical form so that your audience can see the connection between the phrases. If you start your first bullet with a noun, start every other bullet after that with a noun. If you start your first bullet with a verb, start every other bullet after that with a verb. So an example is here, okay? So you have this list of bullet points like find a good place to study, Organize your study time. Study for tests with a partner. Terminology is important. So that one's incorrect. It doesn't quite work because all the other bullet points start with a verb. So the sixth one is correct. Learn and use terminology properly. Okay, so this one's in a passive voice and it also starts with a noun instead of the verb. So make sure that they are all structured the same way. And uh, follow the seven by seven guideline. Use as little text as possible. Let imagery or you know other graphics or uh, pictures or charts or tables speak to your audience. Okay. When text is necessary, though, keep the information on your slides concise so it's easy for your audience to remember. Only use key points. Um, explain and elaborate on the slide content. So have only the key points and then talk more about it. Follow the seven by seven guideline. What does that mean? Not more than seven words per line and seven lines per slide. <clears throat> Although you may need to exceed the guideline sometimes, when presenting to your audience, follow it as often as possible.
And now you're ready to choose a theme after you've completed the planning and review process. You're ready to select the look of your presentation. When you first open PowerPoint up, you're provided with the chance to choose from many different design themes. <coughs> so a theme is a designer quality look that includes coordinating colors, matching fonts and effects. It's put together by graphic designers that has put a lot of thought into, you know, what color schemes go together, what the layout should look like. Um, you can also use the blank presentation that uses the office theme. So I'd like you to now watch the video tutorial video, uh, which looks at creating a new presentation, which looks at choosing a theme and editing a theme. And when you're done watching that video tutorial, please come back to this video. Next, let's take a look at adding presentation content. So after you've completed the planning and review process, you're ready to prepare the slide deck that you're going to use during your presentation. So to prepare the slide deck, you have to understand PowerPoint's use of slide uh, layouts. So using slide layouts, PowerPoint provides a set of predefined slide layouts that determine the position of placeholders in various locations. So placeholders are objects that hold specific content like titles, subtitles, or images. Placeholders determine the position of the objects on each slide. Some layouts include a small palette of icons so you can use to insert a variety of objects. Okay, so this is an example here. These are these dotted boxes are what, what I'm talking about when I say placeholders, okay? So top here should be for a title and down here is for a subtitle. And over here is for the title up here, the top rectangle is a title. And this one has a placeholder icon here, content. You can click on it and you can enter like a table or a chart or an image or text. Okay, so when you click on the new slide arrow on the home tab here, <clears throat> a gallery appears and this layout gallery shows some of the most common slide layouts. So please watch the video tutorial on slide layouts and when you're done with that, please come back to this video. Next, let's talk about the title slide. The title placeholder should be used for a short title which talks about the purpose of the presentation. So try and capture that title in two to five words, don't make it too lengthy. Uh, beneath that, you have the subtitle. It should be used for information like the speaker's name and title, or the speaker's organization, or organization's logo, or date of presentation, uh, information like that. So for this PowerPoint, we have, you know, the topic, Microsoft PowerPoint, that's the title, right? And then for the subtitle, I have Info 1105, which is the name of our course. <clears throat> so after you have done the slide title, you want to have the introduction title. Okay, this will get the audience's attention. The introduction should be a list of topics that we're going to cover. It could be a thought-provoking question or an image that relates to the topic. <coughs> it's your chance to make a first impression. So the introduction slides can be used to distinguish between topics or sections of the presentation as well. Um, next, you will, after you've done your introduction slide, you're going to create key point slides. After you, you should have a slide for each of the key points that you outlined in your storyboard. So please watch the video tutorial and learn how to add a slide. And when you've done that, please come back to this video. Next, uh, let's continue talking about each key point. Each key point should be on a separate slide with the details that are needed to support it. The title and the content layout is the most common layout that we use to present the key point. So the top title and then the chunk of content at the bottom. Um, that is one of the most heavily used one and for a good reason, it's the most effective one. So you list the key points in the title placeholder, like the key point, the main key point in the title placeholder, and then you would create a bulleted list in the content placeholder. And finally, you would end with a summary or a conclusion slide. So to give closure to your presentation, end with a summary slide that's going to reiterate like summarize your presentation's key points. Or you can create a conclusion slide that restates the purpose of your presentation or makes you know, the audience have a, you know, uh, give, give them a call to action. You might want to repeat your contact information as well at the end of the presentation so the audience knows how to follow up if they have questions or needs. Okay, so after you've created the presentation, you want to review the presentation. Why would you want to review it? Because you need to check for spelling errors, incorrect use uh, word usage, and inconsistent capitalization, like punctuation, things like that. And the reason is because mistakes look unprofessional, especially when you have it on a big screen in front of an audience. If you have a glaring typo, then it makes you look very unprofessional. Okay, so 
Make sure you view the slideshow also to ensure that the content is presented in the proper order, that you don't have slides kind of mixed up in the sequence, and that all transition and animations work as they should. <clears throat> Checking spelling is very important and it's very easy to do. So read the slide content as you're typing it for the wavy red underlines that indicate a potential error uh, for spelling or a repeated word uh, or punctuation mistake. So make sure you read each slide after typing its information. Use the spelling feature located on the review tab to check the entire presentation. You can make it do the work for you. Let it do spell check for your PowerPoint. You can also ask a friend or a colleague to review the presentation. Uh, to see if it makes sense and read and view and read each word out loud to see if it if it sounds right okay and make sure that you, that you do correct all spelling or word usage errors found um, another thing you like to do is also the use uh, to use the thesaurus because as you create and edit your presentation you might notice that you're using one word too often perhaps you're using the word then or and or you know, please a lot, um, especially in the beginning of bullets. Maybe you want to use a thesaurus to help you make different word choices that mean the same thing, you know, add some variety to it. And how you would access it, you would go to thesaurus on the review tab, thesaurus here, okay, in the proofing group on the review tab. Now, please watch the video tutorial on reordering slides. Um, <clears throat> next, I like to talk about presentation enhancement. So you can really strengthen your slideshow by adding objects that support your message, right? Um, don't use more words. Instead, use tables, charts, smart art diagrams. Uh, insert objects that you might have created in other applications, like a chart from Excel or a table from Word. They're all, you know, importable. You can use them. Um, very easily, you can add images, you can add word art, sound, animated clips, video clips, and so on. <clears throat> you know, add animations and transitions to catch uh, your audience's attention. <clears throat> um, adding a table. A table organizes information in columns and rows. Tables are simple, and they just include a few words or images. Or they can be more complex and include uh, very uh, structured numerical data. So depending on what you're trying to display, it may be simple or complex. Uh, please watch the video tutorial on how to create a table on a new slide, and when you're done, please come back to the presentation. After that, I would like you to please watch a video tutorial on inserting media objects. Next, let's take a look at uh, applying transitions and animations. A transition is a visual effect that takes place when one slide is replaced by another slide. So it's a transition between one a slide and the next slide. An animation is a motion that you can apply to text and objects on the slide. Animating text and objects can help focus attention on an important point, control the flow of information, <clears throat> and you can really capture the audience's attention, but make sure you don't use it in a way that's distracting and takes away from the important content, but rather to help the audience say Next, let's look at applying transitions. Transitions provide visual interest as a slide is replaced by another slide, right? So you can select basic transitions displayed on the ribbon from the transition gallery available in the transition um, on this slide group on the transitions tab. But when you watch the video, it'll be easier to see where it is. Uh, you can control whether the transition applies to all the slides or just to the current slide. So please watch the video on where you will go about to apply the transitions, on how you can select a sound to play when the transition occurs, and how you could delete a transition. Next, let's talk, uh, let's talk about animating objects. So using animation, you can control the, uh, the entrance, emphasis, exit, and the paths of, audience on, uh, of objects on a slide. So you can add even multiple animations in object. Um, an example is you can have an object fly onto the screen from the left, change its color, and then exit by flying off to the right. You can even create your own motion path for the object as to where it ends up on your screen. Uh, you can also add animation effects. Uh, the, uh, an animation can be modified by changing its animation effects. The animation options available, for, uh, the effect options available for animations are determined by the animation type. So it varies from one animation to another. So please watch the video tutorial on how to apply an animation. And when you're done, please come back to this video. 
Next, uh, we'll take a look at PowerPoint's animation painter feature. So what is the painter feature? It's what allows you to copy an animation from one object to another. The animation pa painter picks up an animation from the first object that you pick and then applies it to the second one on the same slide or on a different slide. So please watch the video tutorial on applying an animation to text or another object. Next, um, let's take a look at inserting a header or footer. You might want certain information like the date of your presentation or your company's logo or company's name to appear on every slide, handout, or notes page. So the best tool to use for this is the header and footer feature. The header generally appears at the top of the pages, while a footer appears at the bottom. But because the theme controls the placement of the header and footer, you might find the headers and footers in various locations on the slide, depending on the theme that you use. So please watch the video tutorial on how to insert text in a header or footer. And when you're done, please come back to this video. Next, uh, we're going to look at navigation and printing. And this is our final section for this PowerPoint. Audiences may ask questions during your presentation that can be answered by going from one slide to another in the presentation. As you respond to these questions, you may find yourself jumping back and forth from a previous slide or moving forward to a future slide. You might find that during your presentation, you want to direct your audience attention to a single area of a slide too, like to zoom in somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so to help your audience follow your presentation, you can choose to provide them with a handout. And there's lots of options available for audience handouts. So we're going to look at navigation and printing. So navigating a slideshow, um, PowerPoint provides lots of different ways to advance through the show. You can go back to a previous page or, page or jump to a specific page. So this table over here that's also in your textbook shows you the different navigation options. And there's many different ways to do the same thing. The correct way is the, your favorite way. So whatever works best for you is the right way to do it. So have a look at it and kind of play around with those different options. Um, next, let's talk about the see all slides command. So this displays all your slides that you can easily identify and select uh, the slide to which you want to go to. You can access this see all slides command in the navigation controls on the lower left of the screen. So once you see all the slides, you just click on the slide of your choice. So please watch the video tutorial to move to a specific slide on the screen using the see all slides command. Um, the next video tutorial, uh, please watch it to see how you can enlarge a section of a slide on the screen. Next, uh, let's talk about the black slide. After your last slide in your slideshow displays, the audience sees a black slide, right? This slide has two purposes. It enables you to end your show without having your audience see the PowerPoint design screen. It cues your audience to expect the room lights to brighten after that, right? Um, if you need to blacken your screen at any time during your presentation rather than the last slide, you can press B. When you're ready to start your slideshow again, you can press B again and it brings it back. <clears throat> um, the next one's annotating the slideshow. So you might find it to add annotations. So annotations are like this, where you, you know, use your pen tool to draw, or you use the highlighter tool to draw on your slide, or you can underline or circle words, draw attention to them, draw an arrow, uh, things like that. Okay. <laughs> So please watch the video tutorial to see how to add annotations to change the ink color for the pen or highlighter and to erase what you have drawn and also how to use a laser pointer. Next, let's look at printing. Printing in PowerPoint. A printed copy of a PowerPoint slideshow can be used to display speaker notes uh, for reference during a presentation or for audience hand handouts or a study guide or just as a means to deliver the presentation in case, the worst case scenario, there was equipment failure and you can't actually show your PowerPoint. So print out of a single slide with text on it can be used as a poster or banner. Um, in your textbook, figure 103, 1.35 shows the print option. So depending on what your printer and printer settings are, the names may vary uh, from what's shown in your textbook. Okay, so here that's what it would look like. This is where you would print. This is where you choose your device. This is where you would print all the slides or a selection of the slides or a custom selection or the current slide up to you what you want to pick. Uh, you can print in color, grayscale. You can you know, print in full page slides, notes page, outlines, or handouts. Uh, your choice. And uh, let's move on to 
the next. Okay, so please watch the video tutorial on how you would print a copy of a slideshow using the default PowerPoint settings, how you would change your slide orientation, how you would print full page slides, and um, how you would determine the color option. Next, let's look at printing handouts. The principal purpose for printing handouts is to give your audience something they can use to follow or take notes in your presentation, right? With your handouts and their notes, the audience has a really good resource for the future, okay? Some people still like having the physical handouts to read through as opposed to just something digital that they never access, right? <clears throat> so handouts can be printed with one, two, three, four, six, or even nine per page, nine slides per page. So printing three slides per page is a popular option because it places thumbnails on the slides on the left side of the printout and lines on which the audience can write on the right side. So they can add their own notes in there. Okay, so here we go. So handouts, you can pick six per page, horizontal. This is print layout here. If it's horizontal or vertical, and then you can preview what that will look like here. All right, so printing notes pages. So if you include charts, technical information, or references in speaker notes, print a notes page if you want the audience to have a copy of the notes as well. So to print specific notes pages, you can change the print layout to notes pages and click print all slides arrow. Click on the custom range and enter specific slide numbers to print in this. So you can choose which pages. Okay, so you might want to print your presentations in an outline, uh, as an outline made up of the slide titles and the main text. Remember the outline view that we looked at earlier on? So you can print the outline view. <clears throat> so if you only want to deal with a few pages while presenting. The outline generally gives you enough detail to keep you on track with your presentation. But remember, the outline view does not display the speaker notes. And this is it for our first uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. There's more to come. Um, don't forget to do your activities and your quiz.